This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz, and this is The List Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the List Building Lifestyle with your host, Igor Kifitz. Today, I'd like to talk about a topic so fascinating to almost anyone interested in marketing that it seems to eclipse everything else when it comes to you know buying traffic. And, and the concept lies in what converts, right? Which offers convert the best? Which offers have the, the highest chance uh, of giving me the uh, positive ROI? What am I supposed to promote to make money? Because essentially the mindset out there that I'm noticing anyway is I need to find the perfect offer and the perfect traffic source and that will give me the perfect business. And, you know, this is true both for business opportunities, e-commerce, websites, and uh, pretty much anything else, with the exception, perhaps, of, you know, marketing coaches and consultants who are creating their own offers. But then again, they pretty much sell the same thing. They sell improvement. So anyway, what I want to chat about today is Igor's marketing rules. And, and these rules give you a general idea of what you need to have in order to make money online. In other words what your offer needs to have, your funnel needs to have, your follow-up sequence needs to have in order to capture the prospect and convert that prospect into a buyer. Now, by the way, before we begin, I want to make it a, a very clear distinction. This is something that Dan Kennedy talks a lot about. Conversion is concept of changing someone's mind. It's, it's not a concept of pushing somebody into buying something. It's a concept of changing their mind and belief system. So you want to keep that in mind when you're marketing. You want to keep that in mind when you're creating offers, when you measure your ROI, when you create your follow-up, when you write your sales copy. You want to remember that to convert means to change their mind and not to push them into a sale. There's a big distinction there, and we may chat about this in future episodes. But for now, I'd like to give you seven marketing rules that if you stick by these rules as a rule, you will make money. As a rule, you will convert more than if you were to ignore these rules because these rules are universal. Now, these rules apply to pretty much any niche, any offer. They apply just as well to somebody selling physical products as they do to somebody selling consulting or business opportunities. They work for e-commerce websites. They work for bloggers and, and uh, Instagram stars and everybody else. Basically, these are universal marketing rules that help you convert. So rule number one, there will always be a no-brainer offer. Now we spoke about this in earlier episodes. Your offer has to be a no-brainer because with the amount of competition today, with the amount of options that people have when it comes to buying anything, and I mean anything, I mean, if you go to your local supermarket and you check out all the kinds of cookies they got, you'll find like 180 something types of cookies, and then you'll find 52 types of crackers, and then you'll find 62 types of sodas. So there's always going to be a competitor fighting for your prospect attention. So when you have the privilege of holding their attention, you better present a no-brainer offer that makes the prospect go, hmm. I'll feel stupid later by not saying yes to this offer right now. Or something that goes the prospect go, hmm, tell me more. I really want to hear more about this. Now, a no-brainer offer can, can really be structured in many different ways. It can be about a bonus that they really want. It could be something they actually genuinely want because that's the, you know, they've been experiencing some sort of a problem in their life for the past two months. It could be a lot of different things and you should study how to create no brainer offers. There's, there's been a few episodes we've done about it, but you absolutely have to have a no brainer offer without one. You're dead in the water. Now, rule number two, there will be scarcity. And it's really important that you have scarcity. It's really important that you limit the amount or the time or limit something, okay? Whatever, like whatever you can limit, go ahead and limit that because people do not value anything that is easily accessible to them. So if you're selling something that you know will be available 
tomorrow and the day after and the day after, then you want to create additional value and limit that. Or maybe you want to literally put your foot down and say, either you get in today or I'm not going to let you in tomorrow. Or perhaps you can you can reposition the product in a way that allows you to create some scarcity. Now, don't try to do bullshit scarcity because people can see right through bullshit scarcity, but always have scarcity or limitation of some sort that does not allow everyone and their brother to buy your product at any time they want. Okay, you're not selling Coca-Cola here. You're selling something of value. You're selling an info product. You're selling a business opportunity. You may be your coach. Maybe you're selling a physical merchandise in your e-commerce store, whatever that is. Make sure that the client understands that they cannot dilly-dally. They cannot sit on their hands and wait until next week to make this buying decision without consequence. Rule number three, there will be clear instructions given on how to respond. Now, this seems like common sense, honestly, but I see it missed so many times. Like a lot of the websites I visit, a lot of the sales presentations I see, there's no clear directions on how to buy. As simple as that. I mean, we see this mistake a lot on TV, the TV advertisements, right? They pretty much just advertise the product and leave it at that. And you're supposed to find that product on the shelves of your local stores. But, you know, even on advertisements, advertisements on TV that advertise non-tangible goods like services, you know, there's rarely that I see that there's a phone number that you're supposed to call or a website to visit or a coupon code to use. A lot of times it just, you know, you're not just not given any instruction. So whenever you're selling something, whenever you're marketing something, make sure to clearly tell them where to click where to go, which website to, to visit, and what to do on that website once they're land there. Rule number four, there will be tracking, measurement, and accountability for every marketing dollar spent. Now, this is by far one of the most important rules of your business, especially if you're doing paid traffic, which I hope you are, because without it, you're you're going to be you know, in the same place 10 years from now. Measuring Every single dollar spent is critical to a point where you're not only measuring the ROI on these dollars, but you know your cost per click, cost per lead, earning per lead, earning per customer, average customer value. You absolutely have to know all your money math, even getting down to a point where you're tracking not just how much a customer costs you to get Um, off of a specific traffic source, but comparing the average customer value traffic source wise. So I'll give an example. If I'm generating clients on Facebook at $7 a pop, and at the same time, I'm getting clients on AdWords for $24 a pop, it may seem like the best option for me to go with if I have to cut my marketing budget is to stick to Facebook. But that would be false because If I measure my average customer value, my average revenue per customer coming from Facebook, that revenue comes down to just, say, $400, and the AdWords customer produces $800. So while it costs me almost $20 more to get the customer in AdWords, I'm making double the money, and that difference is more than enough to cover for the added cost in AdWords. So This is just an example of of what usually happens in the business, by the way. That's what usually happens. The traffic sources that cost you more money to get the customer, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes will result in higher quality customers. But there are, of course, some exceptions. This is where you'll have to test it for yourself. Rule number five, there will be only organic social media marketing. Now, why do I say that? Because I see way too many people waste too much time and too much money on social media marketing, buying tools, buying ads, buying all kinds of services, you know, hiring designers to to design their Facebook cover for $2,000, claiming that it's a strategic investment and all that kind of stuff. In fact, I remember when I was a part of Kevin Nation's Mastermind, which is a $10,000 a year membership, there was one guy there who was selling design services and um, I got on the phone with him and he quoted me $1,800 for a Facebook cover. And that was four years ago. And I said, man, this is just a Facebook cover. What the hell are you trying to sell me? And he's like, well, you know, my client wrote a book and used my graphics and he became a best-selling author. To which I, of course, said, look, dude, he would probably have become a best-selling author even if he did not use your graphic services. He's probably becoming a best-selling author because of the content of the book or the marketing of the book 
not because of the way the cover looks, okay? Not to mention that you weren't the one to come up with the title in the first place, and books are, are a lot. A lot of these books that, that become bestsellers are about the title, like, say, The 4-Hour Workweek or The Millionaire Fastlane, a lot of these different books. So you have to take responsibility for the money and time you're putting in into your social media marketing, into everything that rolls around branding and you know building your presence and stuff like that. Okay, a lot of that stuff usually does not work. Again, with exceptions, depending on who you are. Like if I'm Ryan Dice and I'm running the digitalmarketer.com, I will absolutely invest a thousand dollars into custom graphics set for my website to position myself further, blah, 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 simply because I'm already making a good eight million or ten million dollars a year. And now I'm taking things to the next level by creating a better, you know, look and feel to the website. But if I'm on a shoestring budget and I'm just getting started, I'm going to invest all my money into paid traffic, copywriting, offer creation, and the tools I need to do that, and not into increasing my social media marketing, buying fans for my fan pages or whatever. That is not a smart investment. Rule number six, there will be daily, aggressive, non-apologetic follow-up. Now, this is a subject of much controversy, and, and I've done uh, several episodes on how you're supposed to follow up. But if you missed them, go to listbuildinglifestyleshow.com right now and just search in the, in the search box for email marketing, email follow-up, and stuff like that. But in short, you have to follow up daily, and you have to be unapologetic about it. You have to be super aggressive about it, and you have to be okay with many people not liking it because those are going to be the people that are not going to buy from you. And this is just an excuse they're using to tell you about it. Most people who are planning to buy from you will be happy to get more emails from you if you're doing it the right way. And again, if you want to find out how to do that the right way, uh, make sure to listen to the previous episodes. And if you're marketing business opportunities and you're not sure if you're marketing the right way, then check out bizopemails.com, which is our done for you email marketing service so we can do your, your aggressive, non-apologetic email follow-up for you. And last but not least, rule number seven, there will be strong sales copy. Now, this one cannot be underestimated. I've spent about 12 to 14 months uh, writing copy daily, either rewriting old stuff by hand or writing something for myself, or writing something for clients. I've then invested another year in studying under uh, Ross Bowring, uh, the person who taught me how to write good copy, where we took our, my existing pieces and we rewrote them for better impact. And I got to tell you, that's probably one of the most important, one of the most profitable skills I've ever invested into during my online present, my online career that allowed me to build my empire. So when you are creating offers, when you're enhancing offers, when you're marketing something, I highly recommend to never rely on the existing ad copy of your opportunity. Now, with a few exceptions, okay, the most opportunities, uh, their copy just sucks. In fact, the people who, are put, who put together these websites have no idea how to market because a lot of them are either focused on the product too much or they never really done any marketing to cold online traffic and they just kind of keep, keep warm leads in mind when they write their copy so it won't hit with cold market just as well. So you absolutely have to write strong sales copy for anything that you're marketing, for anything that you're selling, because without it, you're leaving a ton of money on the table and chances are you're not gonna even make a single sale in the first place. So there you go, these are the seven rules, the seven marketing rules. We're gonna have more rules down the road, but for now, take these seven and apply them into your business to make more money. Thanks for tuning in. This is Igor K. Fitz. take care, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The List Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.